Is it morally required that we as a society kill those among us who disregard and break certain rules of our society? Today I will, I will be presenting the case of Dustin Lee Honkin for your consideration. And I'm asking the question, was it truly morally necessary for the government to require and enforce his death in order to punish him for the clear moral evil of his crimes? Now there are arguments on both sides of this dilemma, and it is clearly recognized that this issue is at best morally gray and at worst simply talking in circles. In continuing with this presentation, I will present common arguments both for and against capital punishment and how they apply to the case of Honkin. After this, I will leave it to your judgment whether capital punishment is necessary and whether the right decision was made in the case of Dustin Lee Honkin. Honkin was executed by the federal government on July 17, 2020. He was convicted of killing five people, including two children in Iowa, in connection to a methamphetamine operation that he was running. His victims include Greg Nicholson, a former dealer, Lori Duncan, Greg's girlfriend, Candy and Amber, Lori's daughters, and Terry DeGaeus, a dealer who had dated Honkin's girlfriend previously. While convicted of five counts of continuing criminal enterprise murder, Honkin was only sentenced to death for the killing of the two children, Candy and Amber. This sentence was confirmed in 2008, but a date was only set in 2019 after the lifting of the federal moratorium on executions by the Trump administration. A stay of execution was denied in December 2019 by the administration. And while in prison during this time, Honkin was documented to have converted to Catholicism. The Archbishop of Newark, Cardinal Tobin, claims that he witnessed a spiritual growth in faith and compassion from Honkin. Now, Dustin Lee Honkin was clearly guilty of his crimes. He was convicted by a jury of his peers, of this there is no doubt, yet he had also shown demonstrable remorse and repentance in the years following his conviction and imprisonment. So the question remains, was the death penalty truly necessary? There are several arguments in favor of capital punishment, and the first of which is the argument of retribution, which states that the execution is necessary to punish the guilty for the crimes, which were seen as deserving the ultimate punishment. Burns argues in his The Morality of Capital Punishment that a just society is one where everyone gets what he deserves, and the wicked deserve to be punished. In other words, it is morally necessary to kill those who have broken the rule of society and civilization, that human life is sacred and has intrinsic value. To put it a different way, it's not because murder is illegal that the death penalty is used as a punishment, but rather that the value placed on human life is so high that the death penalty is the only true justice to be had. Finally, there's the argument that capital punishment prevents reoffending by criminals. This argument's very simple. By executing those guilty of crimes worth the sentence, there is no chance of the criminal escaping justice or being let out of their sentence to recommit any more crimes and harm innocents. <clears throat> but is this morally defensible? According to rule utilitarianism, which states that an act is right if it conforms to a valid rule within systems, of rules that if followed will result in the best possible state of affairs or the least bad state of affairs? Yes, because this act conforms to the law, which in the case of the death penalty is predicated on the belief that justice requires proportionate retribution. If the execution of one life prevents the certain harm and loss of another lives, then society benefits as a whole. But how exactly do these arguments connect to Dustin Lee Honkin? According to the argument of retribution, Honkin both deserved the death penalty for his crimes and was sentenced to it in accordance with the law. And according to the argument of prevention, Honkin is in no way able to commit any further crimes today. However, there are several significant arguments against capital punishment. One such argument comes in the form of the sanctity of human life. Nathanson argues in The Death Penalty as a Symbolic Issue that the sanctity we give human life is really a respect for human dignity, and that if we take the life of a criminal, we convey the idea that by his deeds he has made himself worthless and totally without human value. The other argument by Nathanson is of the value of restraint, where he argues that when we choose not to kill, we communicate the importance of minimizing killing and other acts of violence and reinforce the idea of using violence only as a defensive measure and never retributively. This is an obvious moral good, because killing is harmful to our society and our perception of both it and the concept of justice. Another argument comes from Carol Steiker, who argues that capital punishment is in no way morally required by the state or society. She argues for multiple reasons the death penalty has failed its intended purpose. Several of these reasons include the affront to human dignity, which Nathanson covers in his paper, but also include the potential and real consequences 
of executing innocents wrongly accused or convicted, and also a failure of equality, noting that African Americans are more likely to be both sentenced to death and executed. If, therefore, the death penalty has failed in its intended purpose, in even one instance, has that not lessened the impact of every other case of its use? So how exactly do these arguments against capital punishment apply to the case of Dustin Lee Honkin? With regards to the argument of sanctity of uh, life and the value of restraint by executing Honkin, the execution conveyed the idea that his life was made worthless by his past actions, though he had repented and found rehabilitation while in prison. Additionally, the execution further emphasized our reliance on violence to retributively punish a criminal. The arguments by Steiger aren't necessarily valid for the case against Honkin, yet in the aggregate of all executions portray a system which is fundamentally broken, affecting all who are sentenced to death in the federal and state systems. In conclusion, Dustin Lee Honkin was, guilting, was guilty of killing five people, two of them children. He committed this act in order to escape justice and further his criminal enterprise of manufacturing and dealing methamphetamines. Also, however, while he was imprisoned, Honkin repented of his actions and showed remorse for his past life, which he rejected completely. As has been shown, many different aspects of arguments, both for and against the death penalty, apply in the case of Dustin Lee Honkin. In favor of capital punishment are the arguments of retribution, which provides for a just punishment of crimes previously committed, and prevention, which argues that through the act of execution, criminals cannot escape justice and potentially harm more innocents than they already have. In opposition to capital punishment stand the arguments of the sanctity of human life and the value of moral restraint, which keep us as a society from falling to the level of offenders and also reinforce greater moral values within our society and the evidence that the death penalty has failed its intended purpose due to systemic problems inherent within the system of government it is utilized in. Based on the facts and the arguments presented here, it is up to your own judgment whether Honkin's execution was morally required and justified. Thank you.